Hello, and welcome to Conversations to Understand Our World, interviews with Dr. Anthony Rizzi. I'm John Paul Ochoa, an Associate Humanities Member with the Institute for Advanced Physics. Dr. Rizzi is the Director for the Institute for Advanced Physics, which is bringing home all of our thinking to the basic things we see right in front of our face. We start with what we know through the senses, and that's the physical world. So therefore, physics, the study of the physical world, is the starting point for all of our knowledge. With this simple starting point, Dr. Rizzi will bring us back to our senses and then lead us to profound insights into all aspects of our world and beyond. We are used to thinking of physics as an equational kind of thing, and that's what it's been reduced to. But there is a simple way of understanding physics. And Dr. Rizzi, a world-renowned physicist, has this fundamental understanding giving him deep insights. He will relate to you those startling insights and take you into the depths of our world to places that nobody else can. This week, our topic is love and friendship. I think Fletcher is ready to begin the interview. Take it away, Fletcher. All right, well, uh, glad to have you here, Dr. Rizzi. And um, yeah, uh, so tonight we're discussing uh, love and friendship. What is love and what is a friend? A uh, recent article that you uh, pu published. And um, Do you have a copy you can show Mr. Cameron? Oh, yes. I, here you <laughs> okay. go, Mr. Cameron. <laughs> you can get that on the website, right? That's right. IEPweb.org slash magazine, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, so we'll get a chance to discuss a lot of it, um, uh, all all of it at some level tonight, and um, we'll be ta talking about things from you know dating, uh, ordinary, uh, regular friendships that you're used to, but haven't really learned the words for, by which to call them and the meaning of them, um, you know, meaning of hugging, meaning of a kiss. Um, we'll, we'll get to really dive into. Um, you know what how, yeah how you understand these different types of friendship and we get to talk about um the, this a section called permanent people at the end which is a it's funny in some way to say it like that but it, it is true that we don't tend to think of people as permanent and we get to explore that um and we get to see just you know how how the scientism that we've discussed in previous podcasts and and you've probably read about in other resources is really, you know, driving the, the huge destruction of our understanding and living of friendship. Um, so sounds like a lot of good stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. All that stuff that you, everyone everyone talks about love and and friendship and everything, but who whoever asks what it is or de deals with how you you know how do you, how do you make a friend and what is a friend and and what is the purpose of a friendship and, and you know basic stuff that people think we know but we don't think about it, you know yeah so that's right yeah yeah so i mean i think it's i think it's really essential and you know one thing i've been thinking about is that um i think i i mean certainly myself you know when i was in high school and in college and um these were like really you know big deal issues trying to think about the meaning of friendships and dating and marriage and everything and just i just remember feeling like you know, no one's talking about it. You yeah. sort of have some vague sort of moral demands, but it's, even those are somewhat unclear. And yeah, um, different for different people. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I just remember wanting you know different different authorities to speak up and give some guidance on this. And can and you be friends? With, can you be friends with a girl, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing that was interesting because, like, you know, different, you know, different people I talked to had different opinions on it, but still, it was just finally left as, you know, well, whatever you want, right? Yeah, you know, the article starts right off with just talking about the fact that love and friendship are really are core realities that are at the center of our lives, um, and and one of the things I thought was interesting that you start bringing up at the beginning is that because of the advancement of modern science. And all the growth and knowledge that we've had as a culture over the past 400 years, that that has impl implications for the depth of and uh, potential of our friendships. And so I was just wondering if you could speak about that. Yeah, that's a, that's kind of the overarching point of all our coups, all our conversations to understand our world is that we have a, a scientific bent that you can look at on the website, you know, the central theorem 
which is iepweb.org, I think mission. And in that you'll see that everything we have is messed up because we have a modern scientific approach. We have an equation first approach to the world that's formed in every single one of us through our parents and teachers. So when we look at the world, we look at it in this symbolic way that substitutes for the real that we see. So we don't have the concept, we don't have the contact really with ordinary things, you know, like even like the, we don't see the paper, we see the, the stuff that's on it. And we don't see the screen, we see the, the pictures that are on it, right? And, and so we don't look at the world and we don't have an understanding of the world. So when we come to ask questions of like, what am I? What's my purpose? We just look for some kind of structure and we don't get to look at ourselves and we feel very much empty and meaningless. We feel like we don't have a self, that we're constantly looking for our identity because we don't know anything about ourselves. So we never ask these basic questions. And when we do, we don't have the structure to answer. We don't have the conceptual structure because we don't, the concepts are basically that contact with reality that we don't get. And that's been happening for 400 years. So the culture has kind of been, we've kind of been growing with, you know, through our, I don't know, you know, um, childhood and, and teenage years, if you will, of science with um, without our arms and legs and mind growing. <laughs> so yeah. we have to kind of catch up to that because all these things are like encapsulated in the scientific method. We have to unbreak them out. And that's what we have to say at the beginning. If you really, really want to, and, you, and hopefully all our viewers do really want to dig in there. You have to go and you have to get yourself the right formation so you can understand all the terms. We're going to talk about them and we'll fill them out. But to really get it, you've got to realize we don't have this stuff. And the reason this hasn't been said before is because we don't have that foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, that um, the, without the foundation, things crumble. And I think that I really like the verse to kind of summarize what this all means is that God said in, in, in the Old Testament, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Mm. And that's what we're trying to fill in here. Some of this stuff of what is a, what is a man and, and what is his meaning and what is he after in friendships and to get to really hold on to that. You're going to get it, but to really hold on to it, you want to come back and realize the reason you didn't get it, the reason it hasn't been done before is because of this problem. Mm. So I'd like all of us to kind of come back and, think about this all again and just keep coming back with the fundamentals that we're going to rehearse but you'll get them only if you kind of take that time to go off and do that mm -hmm. yeah yeah no that's very helpful it's interesting too you talk about how um you know the fruits of modern science give us you know all this technology that it gives us all this leisure and so like in theory like we have all this leisure that we should be have already yeah. started thinking about all this stuff and um, yeah that's a really important point that we that we have all this in the past. People didn't, you know, they sort of live this stuff and they kind of did it by doing it and passing it along from one generation to the next. But they didn't get a chance to really, really think about what friendship's about because they just didn't have the leisure. They didn't have the. We have all this leisure. We're not making good use of it. We should be yeah. making really good friends and we should be making our community better by through our friendships. But, but I kind of get ahead of ourselves. But I think that leisure point is a good point to bring home that we should be using our leisure for just what you're doing now, listening to things like this and trying to process your life. Yeah. Yeah. So so then so you start to like get us on the direction of like asking questions about what love is. You you say that we need to go back to asking like what is a man and you know talking about the nature of man. So can you bring us up to speed on that? Yeah. So the first step is what is a man. And that he's a rational animal. That is, he's a creature who's a who has plant powers. He has animal powers, and he has rational powers. He has the power to, of the intellect, where he can know things. And so his aim is truth. And until you see that, you, the rest of the article, the rest of idea of friendship is gone, mm. because you have to see our nature is our highest power is our mind, and then the will is the appetite of the intellect. After it sees something true, it wants to go after it. And then we have all these other powers through which we learn and through which we incarnate what we learn, which we have to incarnate it if we're to to be human with our knowledge, to be truly, truly known. Yeah. And, and you, you, so you talk about that, like we need so like, yeah, that, that because it's a, it's a kind of funny thing in the modern world that you actually need like your all your powers involved in knowing things that you actually have to want and love things to um to actually go after it um 
Yeah. So, I mean, that's the, that's the, the four steps that's mentioned in the article. Do you want me to talk about that now or should I wait? Yeah, no, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, the, that's kind of what we're hinting at in that nature of man is the way he knows is through his senses and it has to kind of make a circle. It comes through your senses and then into your intellect and then back into your whole self. It's like what C.S. Lewis refers to without knowing all these specifications we're going to say, but he knows that what he says it's in your chest. And so there's four steps to learning. The first step is to get the principle intellectually. The second step, and that is, means to understand it. So if you're like learning some, uh, like play the piano, you have to know the principles of piano. Then you have to get those principles in your head so you can think about them whenever you want. The, the notes and the, and the harmony and all the different things. And then number three, you have to say, what is this good for? It's good for playing beautiful music. And then how do I do it? Is this, that's 3B. 3A is, what, do I, um, what is it? You know, and is, what is it good for? It's good for beautiful music. 3B is, how do I do that? Oh, I got to get a coach and I got to practice so I can make my hands do what, it's, what they're supposed to do. And then step four is to actually do that under the um, uh, help of your coach. Get practice, practice until it's second nature to you feel the piano to you feel like ah i'm really this is resonating now i'm making the music and it's all coming out oh and you make a little mistake and you and you feel it so it has to start in your in your senses and then it has to go into your intellect and be habituated there and then you have to use it and then it goes into your emotions so until you feel what you know you don't know it it has to go into your feelings or you don't know it that's really important when, when you're going to talk about friendship. Yeah. 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 That's, that's very helpful. And, um, and then you also connect this up to the fact that, you know, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. Like even as you're saying now you need a coach or a teacher or whatever to even yeah. go through the four steps. And so, yeah. So like you talk about how, you know, it's essential to our nature to, to need others to learn and grow in truth. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and you, so you talk about like that we have this, we're made for truth, and we have a love of truth that sort of impels us to go after it, but that that really happens in our human relationships. Yes. So so we're made for truth, but we can't get truth without our fellow man. So our higher good, you know, I talk about this in, in uh, Death of Justice, our higher good is the common good. It's the good that we share in common, that we, the truths that we know we all share without we actually increase each other with shared truth because that way this person knows this part this person brings this new thing and together they make something new so the diversity of all the different people and different powers and and talents and stuff makes this shared thing bit better and so our our higher good is to be part of that common good and friendship that's nothing but friendship friendship is the is the thing that is this community and all the different parts hooking together to make the whole Maybe yeah. we should do the definition of love now, since we have all that. Would that be good? Yeah. Okay, so so I'll just read it, if that's okay, so I make sure I don't miss anything. Um, uh, it's good to memorize it, but I do have it memorized somewhat, but I want to miss anything, so I'll read it. Love is seeing through the senses, through the intellect, the good and thus the true in another, being attracted to it, wanting and willing to remain with it enjoy it protect it and grow it in the person loved the love is proportioned to the one's place with respect to the one loved through the things in him or her loved so that's really the core that's never been laid out completely like that before because we don't start with the generic and move to the specific like we should in proper thinking to say okay my goal is truth i need other people to get truth because I can't possibly figure out the world on my own. That's why there's diversity in the world, so that because each one of us has talents and abilities in a place that nobody else can fulfill. Mm. Yeah. And so we have to see that good in another. And then once we see it, we want to preserve it and grow it. And, and so we're made to be in order with respect to the rest of the community in a certain place, depending on our place in the intellectual hierarchy of the community. And those friendships are what bond things together. Love is the bond of the community. It's the superglue of the community. But truth is the thing that people are seeking that draws them together and holds them together and gives them unity. 
And friends is nothing then follows on that. Friends are those who love each other in truth and their mutual growth in it. But which in the case of a man and a woman doesn't necessarily include a procreational orientation. So I'm just, but now we're saying women can be friends. But friendship is wider than this because yeah. it includes procreational friendships. That is friendships that lead to marriage or in marriage, which is the deepest sort of male-female interaction. But it's part of a larger thing of loving each other in truth. That's why Christ says we should love each other as we love ourselves and lo love the God and then your neighbor. Mm. That's the command. That's the great commandment. Yeah. And that's, that's the glue that holds us together because it's in, but it's in the truth that we're attracted to that and that we preserve it. And we really, then we get into sacrificing to get that truth, that higher truth that we're made for to, to, to lose ourselves. But in that, finding ourselves, because we have this false self that doesn't realize that we need this and doesn't know what it doesn't have yet. So that's kind of that's kind of the big picture of the article. Yeah. But so there's two things that are coming to mind right now. I mean, one is just you know the sort of the definition, all the explanation you've given to lay out the meaning of love, and then the definition of friends is is really hitting me. It's like wow, this is like love is actually involves you achieving something positive not just you sacrificing yourself yeah, yeah right. not just pure like a negation or something a pure yeah. negation um right. and that yeah <laughs> that's very interesting yeah yeah um yeah because we yeah. tend to think of things in terms of negative rules don't do this don't do that and if yeah. you're getting something out of it oh well then that must be bad yeah because that but the whole thing is, is we build each other up we grow each other there's hard times but that's the hard times is not the goal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, alarm. New, uh, that's a new th thing for a lot of people. Right? Okay. Wait a second. You know that? I thought love was sacrifice. No. Love, uh, you have sacrifice within love, but it's not what love is. I mean, otherwise, obviously, then heaven would have to be painful. Otherwise, it wouldn't be love. And right. That's, just, that's yeah. crazy. But we don't, again, we don't have these things clear. We don't have them at this level of specification. Most of us think this is the danger of the scientism is most of us think we have them at least good enough. Yeah. And that's so false. And you lead it leads you to misjudge your neighbor, um, rashly judge him, make conclusions about him, because we don't realize that how much we don't know and how much we know is wrong. Mm -hmm. And then we don't see the good in another. We actually see the evil. What we think is e what we think is Evil actually turns out to be good because we just misunderstand what the person is saying. And it takes a lot of work. And that's the sacrifice of seeing that immediate loss as a long-term gain. Mm -hmm. Seeing that immediate loss of I'm going to do this hard stuff, but in the process, I'm going to get the long-term goal. Every athlete knows this. He has to prepare. It's hard work. But then, as Paul says, the victory is in the crown at the end. Yeah. But you do get the victory. You do after the victory, not the, lo not the loss and the sacrifice. <laughs> That's it's right. the, you push through it, right? The, the 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 baseball player does the sacrifice fly, so that somebody gets a run, the team gets a run, not that <laughs> just loses his ability to get in on base. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's helpful. To flush that out. Yeah, that's very good. Um, and, and the other thing that kind of struck me, um, you when you were talking about love, people's place within an intellectual hierarchy and everything, you know, kind of struck me there because often, you know, you tend to think of friendships as just being like between people that are just on the same peer level or something. And, you know, what, what the article kind of opened up was just actually seeing, no, that you actually have friendships with your teachers. And and in fact, that, that age is not some kind of uh, magical limiting thing that stops <laughs> friendships. Oh, sorry, yeah. you're five years different, you're 10 years, not no friendship. <laughs> can't but. talk to you, sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that, but that's because, you know, we, I, I talked about in the article about how we have the billiard ball view of friendship. You know, you bounce off some people while you're doing the sport you're doing with them, maybe it's billiards. I mean, that while you're doing that, you're, you're quote unquote friends. But as soon as that activity ends, your friendship ends because it never was based on truth. It never was based on the good that you see in that friend that you're trying to grow. It was just a temporary activity. It was the billiard ball needed to bounce off of something. Hmm. And that's the view that we spontaneously have. And, and um, that comes from not really understanding that friendship is about love of the truth, finally. And it's finally the truth, you know, taking you to heaven. 
that you need yeah. a God, the God who is the source of all truth and the perfection of all truth. But you're seeing that through the men. The primary way he works is through the men around you, the men and women that you know, uh, everybody, you know, children, everybody around you is giving you something that you could, you're not going to get from somebody else, a piece of the truth that leads you, that points you back to him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's huge. Um, and I, I really like the the you have that in the footnote, this quote from the possibly from Benjamin Franklin um, about, you know, most people die when they hit age 25, but they're only buried at age 80. You know, yeah. and the, just the, yeah. the, I mean, what you're saying about this whole thing of, you know, people's lives just being sort of just a billiard ball level activity and not. But but how much it could be if it was actually directed to truth yeah yeah right yeah and you know that that that's that's a really important point that um we are not we're made for this higher thing and we've lost that sense of the higher thing it's so interesting because um it just shows how much our friendships could be if they were actually directed to truth and they weren't just at the level of just sort of mere billiard ball level activity yeah right right that that we're made for this truth orientation and we ended up, you know, damaging ourselves instead of building ourselves up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. Um, uh, there's a, there's a friend of mine who was telling me recently, uh, he, he said he doesn't even have any friends that are over age 30 outside of IEP. That's, oh. that's not just intellectually dead, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's the Ben Franklin quote that I think you brought up earlier that, a moment yeah. ago that really we, that I think it's just a great quote that but you know the age differences um do make different types of friendships but they don't but they're nonetheless friendships otherwise you know you wouldn't have fathers having relationships with their sons and daughters you, know? you wouldn't have grandparents you wouldn't have anybody you know it, it, but it's the billiard ball mentality that limits it kind of like what you were implying it limits it to people that are in the set and certain you have this stage of life that you're supposed to do this activity so that confines you to these people that are doing this activity but that's silly that's really silly and you know we set it up like that very confining because we're an activity generate we're an activity driven culture we're not a person driven culture a truth driven culture truth truth driven we're persons what makes us persons is our ability to know and will and live the truth and if we don't address that we don't address, per, address persons so we don't get friends. And it's like you're saying they don't, people don't have any friends because they don't know that to go and seek those people that you're meant to grow with and then hold on to those people so that through them we can grow and that they, we can grow them and we can be part of building the entire community of truth, which, uni, which is the only source of unity because that's in, in the, the common good. It's the good that we share. That's the glue that holds us together. Love is the glue that holds us together. The thing that makes the glue work is the goodness of the individuals and of the whole that right that comes all ultimately from god mm -hmm. so yeah. once you see that you see the need for friendship and you should hunger for it and go look for it and try to establish it and try to live it and try to be there for your friend and try to defend that friendship and all the things that i say and to see the good preserve it grow it and resist the scientistic tendency to scoff and make fun and just laugh and and ridicule as unreal those things but try to your best to find out the truth in every person you meet and find out where your relation is the people that are above you way intellectually above you that you want to make sure you place yourself below those people and listen and learn and grow towards them finally if you're doing that you learn how to do that with god because with god we don't grow him <laughs> <laughs> we grow in him yeah and if we do this with people above this us then we learn that process because that we're, that's how we learn is through the people around us. And if yeah. we're not doing that process, we're not we're gonna we can play games with ourselves with respect to how we're dealing with God. You know, Jesus says, if you don't love the brother you do see, how, do you, how are you gonna love the the, the 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 God you don't see? Yeah. And that's what how it happens is you've got to find your place within the intellectual structure and the people above you. You have to listen to them, try to learn from them. The people alongside of you, you need to work alongside. And we'll discuss more how that works in particular, but that's the general idea that we're, we're, we're supposed to. That's why, you know, in, in a way, you know, as the song says, love is the answer, but truth is the final answer. Yes. Yeah. No, I think that's very inspiring. Um, 
And I, and I think it, it goes very well into this next part of the article, which then starts, you know, you, you talk about this, you know, supreme, supremely important aspect of friendship and our need for it and for us growing in truth and finally helping prepare us for God and everything. And then, the, yeah, then that brings out this need that we have to actually take care to find these friendships and yeah. actually, and it actually takes some work and you call it a kind of like detective job. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. research activity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To find these friends that you're meant to be growing in truth with and working alongside. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to like you were saying, you know, we just uh, sort of activities that we sort of happen to get into with people and you go to okay. random church number six and you meet random person number eight and you talk to him after, at, you know, after church and, then you go to, you know, restaurant number eight and you talk to waitress number four and, <laughs> and you move on. And there's no there's no um, effort to and no sensitivity. Well, there's a person I should get to know. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really big. We, we kind of get the big idea laid out now of, right. you know, where this is seated and, and uh, you know, uh, how to think about this at the general level. So. Can we start talking about the the types of friendship? You actually um, begin this section by talking about um, the the distinction between male and female, um, and that 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 is actually where you need to begin to start talking about what friendships are. Yes. And why is that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, the reason is because we're men in the general sense. We're rational animals made to know the truth through our senses, finally raising to God as the ultimate truth that, for all of creation. And, um, but before we act, we are man or woman, we are male or female. And that's a different article that I've, that I've written that's not published yet, that talks about the nature of man and woman as action and reception. And so man is the actor, woman is the receiver of that action. And that sets a dynamic that leads to procreational relationships, for example, that leads to children, which is the, gives you the diversity in the world so that we know. Um, we have all the different people of all the different types that contribute all their own unique different things. And that's the diversity we talked about. So, to, so in order to see the type of friendship, because the glue between people goes between whether what you are. And the first thing you are is a man or a woman in relation, so your relation to women in relation to man then sets how you will mesh in the whole community. So that's part of your inner nature, whereas the other parts are how you relate to other men and women. So you have to say those three different types of friendships, man, woman, man, 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 woman, woman. And you have to talk about those, which is usually not done, right? <laughs> like, like, what have you seen that people do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, when I've tried to look into this before, uh, you know, it kind of goes directions of, OK, we're going to it's about like, is it a useful friendship or is it a, you know, like a loving friendship or is it a the, know, four, the four loves, right? Yeah, the four loves. Yeah. yeah. The, those Greek words, the filio, the yeah, eros, all that. agape, yeah. all that yeah. Yeah. As, as if that helps you, <laughs> you know, like answer a question like. Should girls and boys, should girls and guys be friends? Should men and women be friends? You know, and yeah. And what is a friend? And it doesn't help you with any of that. So you have to start with what a man is, and then the next thing that specifies him is whether he's a man or a woman, whether he's in the action reception dance, if you will, um, which yeah. side of the dance he's on, she he or she's on. Yeah, that's yeah. So you have to get there in order to to, to decide what the, what the friendships are, and they just skip that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, I understand that you worked with a young woman on this article and a friendship came out of that. Yes, that's right. So that, I mean, um, it was important with an article like this to obviously to have a woman's perspective. And so the, the, the yeah. a, and a woman that's non-familiar because the article, it's an important point that the article is really emphasizing the non-familiar so we can look at the diversity that mm -hmm. is what friendship first is before you get the family. And within the family, there's certain dynamics and relationships. And that's a whole nother thing. But here we're mo mostly focused on the most generic of how we relate. So yeah, so that was very helpful to get her perspective and to have that friendship. It's just a good yeah. thing. Tell me more about this friendship and how it helped the article come about. Yeah, th this is a good time, I think, to bring up the generic and the particular. 
because we forget that all there are is particulars. Sounds silly, but that's not that's all there is. And so we see the generic in the particular. We see in the apple the general appleness. Mm. And so if I want to learn about anything, I better go look at the something. You know, if I want to learn about dogs, I better have a dog. If I've never seen a dog, you know, so much for me telling you anything about dogs. You know, I can't just go <laughs> on my study, stare at the ceiling and say, hmm, this word dog, it must mean this and attach something to it. That's, <laughs> that's crazy, right? I mean, so but although this is often how we do things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for non-procreational friendships, which is what we're talking about, we have this diversity. So we have to have the a friendship in a diverse environment because, again, that's the one that has, you know, the non-familiar one, as we said, that has the 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 difference. This person is in a different environment. This person has a different um, set of talents and abilities and is just generally very different. And that complementarity of the difference makes makes the you know the non-procreational friendship you know sort of defines it in a way. Mm -hmm. So so um, in this case, you know, uh, I uh, this young there's a young woman who she was very interested in the IEP material and advanced pretty quickly in it and learned it, was excited about it, and we met and became friends, and we decided that you know to investigate this idea of friendship and learn about the idea of friendship and. In that, I was able to look at in, into our friendship and learn all kinds of things about the nature of friendship. And so, you know, it's just that's what happens with friendship. You grow in truth in friendship, and um, you need that particular relationship to see in that. And I had, you know, so like I said, the woman's perspective was very helpful, and I was able to to really, you know, get a lot of the information you see in the article there, working on the article with her. And so, generally, you know, we have to remember that. Friendship is about truth, so you're seeking some truth. And, you know, it's interesting to say in this case that sometimes you have problems, and she I know she had some problems with people that didn't understand some of the truths that she was getting. And that reminds me of a story, because this happens sometimes with IEP material. Anytime you get truth, it's new, and, you know, people don't always digest new things uh, in, the, in the kind of way that goes down normally. <laughs> but, this, but this example happened, you know, where a teacher called up right right after SBS was published. He had already been using it in his high school and, and, and for a pretty short period of time, and the kids were just loving it. And he was calling up to tell me how excited everybody was about it. But he did have this one student, his mother kind of got on his back, and she called him up and said, what happened to my son? He's just so interested in the world and so interested in truth. And, and he was like, whoa, I thought that was my job. So anyway, this happens sometimes. But the point is, friendship is about truth. I, I mean, I, I just think that's so interesting also to, just to bring home that, that friendships are finally about truth. You know? Yeah, that, right. Yeah, you know. yeah. So, so that's, I mean, that's right. So the, this friendship is about this article. And, yeah. I mean, it was about us as friends doing the article. And, and that's an important thing to see that truth is what you're always after. You're always going after the truth to get um, uh, uh, some new um, piece of God, if you will. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I think that should, you know, really make us reevaluate our friendships that we have now. And <laughs> yeah, to see whether they're oriented right or whether they should be there at all. Yeah. I mean, we should be friends with everybody, right? The level and place of the friendship. So the, right. this is what the article is trying to say. You know, Jesus says, um, no greater love has a man than this to lay down his life for his friend. And yeah. um, and that's what he did for all of us. So all of us are meant to be friends with each other, but different levels of friendship. Our normal meaning of friends is sort of people we hang out with, but we're expanding that. So that includes the whole. So everybody should be your friend, but where they're placed mm -hmm. is depending on where you are in, in the intellectual hierarchical structure and what your individual nature is finally, who you're going to be friends with, who you're going to resonate with, who you're going to be syncopado with. And, yeah. and that is, is the place where the resonance will work. And, you know, it's a body. And so each person has a place in that body. And without that person in that place, you, you're, you're damaged. The culture is damaged. And so we have to do our work, like you said, the detective work of seeing where we belong and who are friends and make sure we – you know, we hold on to those friends and we grow them. And sometimes we can mistake where a friend belongs and have to rearrange. And um, but without knowing, you know, there is really not a mistake because people don't know that you ordered your truth, so they don't do this work. You know, if you've done this work, you're not going to make the mistake um, yeah. generally because you you walk into it carefully and you know what you're doing. 
And yeah. that's what we have to learn to do. We have to learn to walk into these things carefully, make decisions, and and move forward um, with the understanding that this is what we're doing, not get that end lost. Mm -hmm. That's the end. Is that yeah. you have to grow in truth yourself and and the, everyone so all of us can finally share the beatific vision we're all getting to see the truth directly um if we to the, i mean supernaturally that's the only way that can happen but it's, a, it's an extension of what we're already doing so if we're not already doing it it's not going to be fun for us you know? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be trying to do something yeah. else and then we'll go to the wrong place <laughs> yes yeah yeah that's a sobering <laughs> thing to think about <laughs> yeah so um this is really interesting, you know, this, uh, you know, seeing, getting to see the step, the meaning of friendship and the different types. And, and you, you, in the article, you talk about the importance of really thinking and about and understanding the man woman friendship. Yes. Um, and and it, it hasn't, it's sort of fundamental to be able to understand the others. Yeah, there's so many, that's right. And there's so many new things in this article, but I think this one really needs to be brought home because our world really needs it today. We're so confused about what is a man. I and mean, nobody knows. I mean, this article and the previous article, the only ones that really talk about in any kind of human way about what a, what a man and what a woman is. We've mm -hmm. got to get away from the plant definition that a woman is somebody who has babies. Okay. <laughs> That's insulting. Um, <laughs> you have to get the intellectual, the core definition, which is the action reception that the man and the woman act, the man acts, the woman receives, and then acts back, and you have a relationship in which um, truth grows. Mm. And um, so the man-woman man relationship is action reception. It's a defining primal iconic of the rest of relationships because it's a simple one, act, receive, and, it's a, it, and the man um, has to lead in that action. The woman has to give back. If the woman, uh, the, what the woman gives back, the man cannot do without. And we can go into that another time, but the point is, is that that's the primal relationship. And the thing that people miss, they miss that because they don't see that as a grow, as a truth. That the very reason that's needed is that's the way we grow in truth in the primal way. And the deepest way is in, the, is in marriage, where man and woman gets married. But before that, in time, and in, 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 in principle in a way, is the non -pro, what I call the non-procreational friendship. You can't marry someone until you know her. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't be on a marriage path until you know that this is a woman and in the case of man i'm doing it from my own point of view okay yeah but the woman's point of view would be the uh, the reverse but obviously but but the point is is that i have to know her first yeah and only then can i see if i can go the, the next step to a procreational path yeah i'm not married already and then um and then um but non-procreational friendship has to exist. Otherwise, we have no sexuality until we're married. Oh, <laughs> that just isn't so, because then you can never get married. It's like a magic thing. And that's really what our culture has done, is it's it's taken sexuality and it's pushed it over to the procreational, and it pushed that into the procreational act, and it's turned the procreational act into something pornographic. So mm -hmm. the word sexual in our culture jumps over here to the, to the merely procreational act, the marital act, and then turns that into a mechanical uh, pornographic thing. So mm. all of our sexuality is put to this point and mm. it destroys our ability to see ourselves as sexual beings because we come into the world as act as a man or a woman and we have to, um, to respect that nature um, in order to act in the world in a sensible way. So, you know, it's just yeah. like the analogy in mechanical things is if, you know, you can't, you know, you can't, the lead has to go in the pencil in a certain place. It can't go in the eraser slot. You know, it has to go <laughs> where it goes. There's a certain a relation there, and you have to respect that relation. And if you don't know that, you're going to end up breaking your pencil, and you're never going to yeah. get it to work. Um, so the point is, is that you have um, a uh, a uh, an action reception, primal action reception relationship that's non-procreational first. And then, pe then people can, we can talk about dating maybe another time, but the dating has to go to that phase from non-procreational to procreational orientation. And that's a shift from, um, so, so because of action reception, let me back up a little bit. As the article talks about, because of action reception, the man and woman relationship has to go through the relationship to the truth. Uh -huh. Whereas man-man relationships start by looking at the thing and the relationships develop. So that's why I say in the article that that 
man-man relationships are side by side, man-woman relationships are through the relationship or face to face. Because with the man-woman relationship, you go through the relationship to the thing, mm -hmm. um, to whatever you're uh, doing. So the so um, that's a really important point if we're not to get you know into all kinds of arguments because you're if you don't realize the difference, if you're not respecting the nature of a man and the nature of a woman, you'll miss the point and you'll and you'll and you'll start an argument you know with with somebody that you don't mean to have an argument with. <laughs> So, so these are very important because that's how you relate. So, um, uh, uh, so much to say about that, but that's kind of the starting. Yeah. Point. Well, yeah, I mean, that's there's a lot already there to think about, but um, then I mean, probably should say one more thing. The, the thing yeah. is, is that we are um, as men more linear logic oriented, and we tend to go linear logic, and and women are more um, wider picture people they're more like all these different things and a woman can pick up some piece over there that we might not even notice uh -huh. man is, uh, is is good at the linear logic but he but what can happen without the interaction with the woman is he can just follow that logic right into a brick wall and miss all the stuff around <laughs> and so the women provides that extra um material if you will for for us to think about that we would miss if we don't pay attention to them so the so, so there's a complementarity there, intellectual complementarity, then it's reflected biologically and all the way down, that starts at the depth that we have to bring back. And so we already have these non-procreational relationships, but they're just disordered. Mm. Yeah, 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 that's, uh, that's good. I mean, understanding this sort of basic, uh, yeah, the complementarity between men and women that, that then allows this, uh, relationship to really yeah grow in truth that's that's really helpful um and this you know this is also really interesting because you know it's in this part of the article you start developing this and you actually then then explain the meaning of intimacy yeah um, right uh you i just want to read it here because i think it's really helpful it says uh intimacy between two is a real knowledge of the individuals of each other and a mutual knowledge of real things that the two have learned together as well as shared knowledge about all kinds of other things. Yes. How is this related to your explaining that friendship is in some sense unshareable? Uh, um, yeah, that's that's really important. Friendship is about two individuals. And individuals in themselves, you know, only God knows certain depths of certain individuals. And we, because we, as we said before, we go from generic to particular. And so we never really quite reach the particular. But two individuals... They have that individuality that meshes together, and that makes them unique in some way. So, less deep friendships are are, are going to be, you know, pretty obvious. But when they get past a certain depth, there's going to be certain things that are that are having to do with the context of the relationship and the individuality of that relationship. And some of that's not going to be very, very hard to share, if not impossible. Now, it doesn't mean like somebody on the app that doesn't that knows both of you that really knows what he's doing about knows understands this friendship in. It, and, and is, has a high, understands the friendship issue, these principles, but also has a high character that he might be able to help a friendship if the friends mutually agree to have that help. Um, but the point is, is that, that that is normally in normal circumstances, that is like part of the friendship to be have that space. And so we have to just, again, learn to respect that, that there are things that have to be kept in their proper context and in their proper order and that individuals have a depth to them. So friendships need privacy. That's all people should stay out of other people's business and let their friendships have that context, that depth. And um, yeah, I mean, so it's and, and you, you lay out that, the, you know, because of the, this nature of the man woman interaction, everything that that then intimacy can grow even in a non procreational relationship. Yes, right, right. And that's right. And so the intimacy is determined by the depth of the truth invest being investigated. So already with procreational relationships, there or so so the difference between a non-procreational and the and the procreational relationship is a non-procreational relationship goes through the re relationship directly to the community and to the truth. Whereas the procreational relationship go, goes once you enter a procreational sort of dating relationship. And then, of course, in the marriage, it becomes internal where it starts making a nest so that the truth goes also directly through 
I'm not directly, but interiorly in a nest through children, giving the truth out to the community and receiving the truth back from the children. And there's an internal path there that doesn't exist. It makes it substantially different, makes it substantially deeper than mm -hmm. intimacy level automatically for the procreational relationship is much deeper. But non-procreational, ordinary non-procreational ones are about ordinary things. So they're ordinary level intimacy. They're not very intimate at all. But there's nothing excluding, as I pointed in the article, in fact, because you can have non-procreational relationships, you can have deep non-procreational relationships. Now, those are going to be extremely rare. The really super deep ones, the ones that you would define sort of the highest level ones of new discoveries, making discoveries that nobody's ever made before. Those are going to be highly rare, 0.001% or something, because it has to be a certain the level of the population that's doing this research and capable of it and has the maturity to do this. But because of that, there's going to be deep intimacy in those very rare relationships. Nobody's really thought about that because they've not made this distinction. And it's a mess because, like I say, the thing to keep remembering about this, until you see non-procreational relationships as real, you have no sexuality. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're sexless. Yeah. You're, you're, you're no gender. You're genderless. Yeah. And that's what's happening to the world is we increasingly are not living these ordinary lives. And we're not, and we're increasingly thinking of ourselves as the same with no different differentiation. And so we're leaving ourselves starved of a world of being able to have sexual activity. Sexual activity, the very words of me saying them, points you back to that point back there to the marital act in the pornographic <laughs> sense. That's right. not what it means. So okay. It means just acting as a man or a woman in the world. Yeah. And you act, uh, everyone does it, right? Everyone. Without realizing, you talk, men and men have their own different kinds of conversations. With men and women, it's different. And with male, female, female, it's different. Everyone half knows it, but I'm telling you, almost everybody I told this, yeah, they start noticing it. Once they start being allowed to see it, they start noticing it because they're taught to just ignore it. So yeah. we're killing, and unless we can get the non-procreational back as the first step, you can't specify it to the procreational. Yeah. Because every generic precedes a specific you can't have giraffes unless you first have an animal mm -hmm. the animal can be a giraffe or it can be a lion but if you have no animals you don't have any giraffes <laughs> you have no not if you have no non-procreational friendships you don't have any procreational friendships because it's a specification of the non-procreational this is basic thinking basic reality that we've lost but we and we all know that we're men or women when we come into act, but we don't really know it. We don't act in it. We don't think it. We don't have it in the four steps because we don't have step one. Yeah. We have some kind of vague idea that we haven't formed, and it's making us make a lot of mistakes. But those, So I bring up the deep non-procreational relationship because if you see that when you see the magnitude of what we're missing and you can see the contrast, because even those very deep ones do not go internal. They go yeah. through the relationship directly to the community yeah and there can be very intimate extremely intimate but they still don't go internal so that's substantially different from the procreational so I just that's a really profound point now most like i say 99.99 percent of the people are just going to have ordinary procreational there's some in between that are that are a little bit more and so i i would give it an example of that if somebody has um is aware of um uh uh, the movie A Time for Miracles about St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, her relationship with the bishop, mm. you can see that's a pretty intimate, it's not It's not by any means a deep, um, uh, that deep non-procreational one that I'm talking about, doing discoveries of the deep level like theology and man and, and things about the highest things about man, things about the nature of man and stuff. And, um, uh, but this is, this. It, it's not ordinary. You see their intimacy is reflective of the high truth that they're working on together to try and get education into the colonies, into the American, um, budding American community. Yeah. And you see, if you watch that show, you see their relationship, how good it is and how much it, it's necessary for, for the, what we had in America to happen. Not yeah. just, and, and cause that's a, you know, Bishop Carroll, who's kind of the key figure there is the first American Bishop appointed by the Pope. So it's mm -hmm. very interesting to watch that and see that, come out but the point is is that you have to get that understanding of the male female non-procreational and to, to see that you already have that male female dynamics at a substantially different level but there because you're still a man or a woman if you're but ordinarily we have to get that back we have to start getting our non-procreational um 
ordinary relationships with all of us will have back. Yeah. So we have to start, you know, doing things to show as men we show doing things to show deference to women, holding doors for them, treating them, making sure that we're 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 not saying things that are demeaning to them in front of them or demeaning to to their nature or demeaning to anybody, actually respecting their relationship first sort of view and being sensitive to that, that, that and what we say has to be extra clear because we're going to help form what they're thinking and that they'll be, it'll be much better if we're clear. And when they say back, we'll be able to clarify whatever they're saying and they'll be adding things that we can't possibly get anywhere else. And that'll set a new community, you know, relationship at, at a simple, non, not very intimate, just very light level, but really important. You know, yeah. that for women to dress feminine and modestly, to, to promote this truth seeking thing and for men to not dress like pigs and not, you know, <laughs> did not show, not act as if we don't care about the people, the women, especially the women are going to be sensitive to this. We dress like a pig in front of them. We don't, we don't um, act with manners and politeness and stuff. It's, it's showing a disrespect that women will especially pick up on. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. You know, I, I've been thinking about that a little bit with, you know, seeing some interactions of like, you know, violating what you're saying. Like we're, uh, I've seen sometimes where like men deliberately treat women like one of the guys. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. and <laughs> yeah. just, yeah. yeah, it just feels so strange. And um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can see, I can see what you're saying about the need to really, yeah, live out these distinctions and how it will help the community flourish. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, thanks for that example about um, Bishop John Carroll and Elizabeth Ann Seton. That uh, that's really powerful. You also mentioned the article, um, other examples of throughout history of some really interesting saints and uh, yeah. like Saint Francis de Sales and Saint Jean, Jane de Chantal. They're really profound. Yeah, they had they had a. Um, I still wouldn't say it's that deep non procreational one that we we're right. talking about, one that discovery one, right. but. But it's pretty deep. I mean, it's pretty deep. If you look at their letters that they write to each other and stuff, I think you'd be surprised. It brings up, you know, the word romance. And the word mm -hmm. romance is kind of a cheat word because what it does is it takes all male-female interactions, lumps them into one word, and dumps them into the procreational path. And then uh -huh. takes all that and dumps that into the marital act and dumps that all and then <laughs> and presses that into a point. And so all, all romance is over here that inaccessible except for this. And... And, and that's that's not we have from conception we have male femaleness in us the powers of male femaleness in us and as we grow those powers are there and real and we and and you interact differently as a woman and a man interacts differently than uh, than a woman in the world and that's because of those powers those powers don't just come automatically from nowhere when you get married <laughs> <laughs> decide to start dating they're already there and yeah. your interactions with people are that way. And the thing you have to realize is that there's that these different levels and to be careful to see, seek the truth level that only you're supposed to do and not more, not less, but right where you're supposed to be and keep in mind the dangers because these powers are good, but they're very dangerous. So you have to be very careful how you use them. And the man has a special responsibility as the actor in it to make sure that's kept mm. and, and to keep that order and and to not, on the other hand, to say, okay, it doesn't matter. We'll just treat each other like guys. Yeah. That's destructive, too. There's yeah. two sides. You know, you can fall off on either side. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, um, you don't, the, the solution to evil is not to get rid of the good. Because remember, yeah. evil, is a, evil is a distortion of a good. And, and the solution you might think of is get rid of the good, and then we don't have any evil. Right? Yeah. If, if, if you're, you know, it, it, like, you know, if you... If you have a, a strong guy, you know, and he, he can go kill somebody. So just, you know, cut off all his arms and legs and stuff and problem solved. Yeah. Sounds <laughs> good to me. Okay. <laughs> but that's it's crazy, you know. There's the yeah. guy who chopped off his arms and legs and now, you, you know, your car fell on top of you. And what do you do? Because the guy <laughs> that can pick it off is <laughs> no harm. So it just isn't right. And you, you don't want to do that. And that's what we've done. We've it's sort of convenient. We've taken this word romance and we've stuck everything in it and dumped it over there. These powers exist beforehand, and they're there, and they're acting. If you're going to have romance, which you do in, in the procreational path, then you have the elements and powers. There's an analog over here, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. That's in holding doors and do, and being and allowing the action reception to live at the appropriate. It's a low level, but it's still real. Yeah. 
So, so like with the St. Francis and St. John, Jane and Chantal, like, so like their letters, I'm aware, yeah, there's like very affectionate, you know, right. responses and communications between them, which yeah. would, could be, could be labeled as romantic, but yeah. then, but then gets, yeah, that word then gets just. Yeah. And then you can't down. make any sense of it. Right. And John, you know, um, John Paul too, who wrote so much on man and woman didn't get any of this stuff, but he did try, he did try and, and, and tried and did, I think, succeed at some of getting people to say, we, we've got to think about this. Unfortunately, yeah. people haven't followed him. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, he had this relationship with this strong relationship with this woman mm. um, that uh, lasted like 30 years. Mm. Um, yeah. And, uh, and of course, there's other other examples that you can talk about St. Francis and St. Clair. And these yeah. are real examples of people who didn't suppress their masculinity and femininity, but realized that they were vehicles for truth at some level. They didn't have the clarity that we're now given, but they had it what we call infrascientifically and it's sort of in their gut and they and they did it they, you know and yeah. they did it at the level and we have more responsibility now because we have more leisure we have yeah. more free time most pe people in the past you got to remember put yourself back in the past people were struggling to survive your next meal you didn't know where you had to make sure the crop was in you had no time to to, to read and write and that's why it was just a top elite i mean it's always going to be the case there's going to be a top elite group of men that do the stuff and they pass it along, but it's now to the point where, you know, huge segments of first world population, most uh, know how to read. That's yeah. unheard of throughout history. And they have thoughts and access to things, truth, but we're not making use of it. Mm. We spend our time in billiard ball projects. We don't seek out friends that can really grow us and have that joy of going in truth and, and seeing the person through that, encountering the person the people around us by by seeing that truth in them and then the, then then you know sharing that with other people yeah 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 that's big yeah it's big well um i really want to get to this part of the article um I mean, there's so much to talk about. It's hard, but you know, it feels like we only have 15 minutes left. It feels like there's a, a yeah. ton to dig up. I know. So. Um, well, I mean, so you know, we've we've talked about you know the types of friendships and um, and the, how important the man woman friendship is and intimacy and all these things. But a huge part of this article, which is I think really amazing and and helpful, seeing these things explained and proven, um, is the physical expression of friendship. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think you, know, you, you hit a lot of really important ones. You, you talk about, like, the meaning of the handshake, the hug, the kiss, the marital act. And I think it would be, you know, I encourage everybody to read all the stuff about the marital act. That's a huge, important one. But I think it would be great if we could at least focus on especially the kiss, but also, you know, about the handshake, too, if, yeah. if we could talk about that. Yeah, so so I, I let's start with the handshake because I think that's a, a profound one that people haven't paid attention to. So there's a level of genericness. There's the, the handshake, which is very generic in the sense that it can be specified to different levels of friendship across the board. Mm. And then there's the, the kiss, which is not near as generic, but still much more generic than the marital act. And so that's kind of at scale there. And, you, you know, and then you have hugging, which we, that we're, we're going to leave aside for the moment. But yeah. all those things do two things. They express the already existing friendship and they deepen the already existing friendship, but they have to be appropriate to the relationship that you're in. So I think the handshake, I mean, I've never seen anybody say this before, but I think it's because we don't analyze these things for their natures. It's part of the problem of the bad physics that we have, the central theorem. If you go to the site, you'll see about the central theorem that we have a bad physics at the core of our culture that needs to be addressed that started at the scientific revolution by a misunderstanding of science. Science is so great and we've got to get it back with its mm -hmm. foundation and people to see what it really is. But without that foundation, we miss questions like what is a handshake? Well, a handshake, <laughs> your hand or your chief means of your mind operating. It's through your hands that you do stuff that your mind says. So by shaking someone's hand, you're basically saying, look, man, I want to do something with you. I want yeah. to be a part of working and growing the world with you. That's what that handshake means. Yeah. You don't ask that because you don't think about the physics. You don't think about the physical nature and what it means and having its own nature. We think of, you know, how can I make an equation out of it? How can I make a new device out of it? Yeah. <laughs> so we miss that kind of question. And so, you know, that's, re but the kiss is really an even, you know, it's more neglected because it's some, I don't know why we don't ever ask what is a kiss, but in the article, 
I define, I say what a kiss is, and it's a very intimate thing, but it's non-procreational. In and of its nature, it's non-procreational. Mm. Let me repeat that. It's non-procreational in and of its nature. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, what does it have to do with procreation? Nothing. <laughs> Your mouth is where you eat and it's where you talk. And I talk about how where you talk is the breath. You know, we get the whole Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Those words we're talking, the Spirit has to do with breath. And we say that because it's the way that that we breathe and live, and it's the way we vocalize our thoughts is through our mouth. So this is, the mouth is a very intimate place. It's your face, which identifies you like nothing else. So the mouth is a very intimate. So and I don't want to get into all this, so much to talk about, we're almost out of time, but the action reception nature makes this appropriate only for a man and a woman because it expresses this action reception um, intimacy. And it's only, it's a very, for the reason I just said, it's a very, highly intimate thing and it should be reserved for that yeah um and so that means you know um way like very deep that those i think you know that um there may be others but i don't think so but it needs to be i think the deep non-procreational ones the the discovery ones the 0.01 percent where that kiss can be used by people that are in the right place and have the right character and so forth especially the man that's leading um Mm -hmm. And, and but we, and even within the, the procreational path, it should be reserved to, depending on the the level of the truth the couple's confronting and the character of the people, right before marriage or into marriage, because it's so intimate. Not because it's procreation, but because the specification demands that intimacy at some level. And you know, there's different types of kisses. We're just talking about the simple kiss. Right. Yeah. So you really have to get these things straight and think about them. But the idea that we think it's non-procreate, that we think a kiss is procreational is coming from our scientized worldview that does what I just said. You know, it takes all sexuality, lumps it into the pornographic marital act, right? Okay. That's everything. So the kiss must go over there because it's sexual. It goes over there. Right. Now, I mean, everything you do is sexual at a certain level because you're a man and a woman. Yes. You're talking to a man. There's a male-male interaction. You're talking to a woman, you know, on and on. So. Yeah. So you, you have to get that straight in order for this to make any, to, to, to us not to muck it up and make a mess of it. And that's, you know, getting that straight is important because the, it's always about the truth that you're getting to. Yeah. And, and, and that um, through the relationship, has the relationship for male, female to, at the level of that it's ha- it has to be established for truth to flow. Mm-hmm. At some level, it could be very simple level for not ordinary for most of our lives for most people it's just ordinary but there has to be for for the woman there has to be some respect of the relationship that's that's not the same for men men can look at the stuff and become friends because they're arguing about something out there yeah and you do that with a woman you're liable to get hit <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. um and and so you have to it, every the man female relationship is essential to truth building and we need each other for that and we have to respect each other for that but we have to get these expressions right. And the levels, the, as you move along the procreational path, again, which is the major path for most people, so I'm going to talk about that the most, um, you have to move along the, the level of intimacy. So to kiss too early is to lie and to introduce a deep lie that can pervert the relationship off into something that's away from the truth and into something that really goes the wrong direction, depending on how you know the people involved. And so, but because what happens is, as you're moving along in a relationship, at some point you get to some stable place, but as you're moving along, there's an attachment being generated and the attachment's generated both by um, just the general conversation, but also by the physical interaction, the hugging, the handshaking, the, um, whatever's happening. And so an attachment, that's a healthy, good thing at the level that it's supposed to be at appropriate. It's specified by the truth that it's after. If it's after children, that's a high level truth, even if it's not, you know, talking about huge things by their nature children demand a level of intellectual in, intensity that yeah. that is going to invoke a deep a require a deep intimacy and and so you always have that truth that you're in front of you that's determining and then your own growth and ability to move from stage to stage but attachment should be forming it's natural we don't want a world in which people just don't okay i'm done with you 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 down the trap door and go to somebody else, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so that way, I, you know, that way I don't have to worry about you know being sad because somebody left or something. It's very convenient, you think. Yeah, yeah. But it's a very empty world. You know? uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, man, uh, it's hard to choose what to <laughs> next. I mean, I guess I did because I mean that very naturally wants me to go to the permanent people section. But yeah. I did want just before we go into that, I just I, I feel like we can't not mention like you know at least for people to go look at the article and look at some of the things that you referenced surrounding um, a lot of these things. But especially with the kiss, I thought I think people need to really go think like you bring out the fact that just historically. It's been a part of, you know, Western civilization, Christian civilization, and like with the Holy Kiss, with the yeah. early Christians, and the, the even the Kiss of Peace and the Mass. The Kiss of Peace and the Mass used to be a, a kiss on the mouth. Um, yeah. And um, it, it, and it moved as they realized it was too intimate, but they never thought of it as procreation. And old television shows, you can watch old television shows and you'll see that they didn't think of this as necessarily involving leading to procreational acts. So... There's a loss of the the me intimate meaning of this because it's lumped into this one corner and it's just not right. We have to spread it back out and we have to get the so the so procreational couples kissing like right after they're married or maybe right before in some cases, that's a level new level of intimacy that should be lauded and applauded that should go forward in time and that you deepen and not be afraid of those attachments because those attachments are what we're making. That's the glue that makes us a community that rises us in truth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, that's very helpful. Um, yeah. There's so much to think about there. Yeah, uh, it's like a ton. Yeah. Oh, this is hard. Um, <laughs> well, um, so I guess I, we should talk about the permanent people section because like you're saying that it, it's like, it's like the modern world has it set up in us. And it's just kind of convenient if we can just cut off our yeah. people that we're connected to, because that way we don't have to get hurt. I and unfriend you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was easy. <laughs> you know. um, I, I delete that contact. I don't have to ghost that person, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, like, I mean, you, you talk about how, how ultimately friendship is a permanent thing and the people are permanent. I mean, can you explain that some? I mean, it sounds... Yeah, that's so important that we're permanent. We're permanent, <laughs> which means, you know, if you read the Science Before Science chapter, when you read the science, you should read the Science Before Science to kind of get the yeah. global picture of all this, and you'll get the understanding that we're intellectual creatures that we've mentioned, and you'll see in that you can prove that that means you have a non-material core. That means you have a spiritual core that is not changeable other than it is. So it's permanent. It can't go away. And so that means your fellow man is the same way. He has the same nature. So yeah. when you're in, you know, um, C.S. Lewis has something on this. I can't remember quite how it goes, but, you know, you're after the Blessed Sacrament, the, the, your highest encounter with God is your fellow man because there's a permanent thing in front of you. And, and yeah. that permanent thing, I mean, he didn't, again, he didn't have this clarity that we're introducing now. It's really important. This is the first time we've got this clarity, this, these proofs, and really understanding these things, but he saw it intuitively that, and, and, and through the faith, obviously. But the point is, naturally, you can figure this out, and you can see that person's permanent. I have no business eliminating that person from my life. People yeah. have different places, and there's, you can't just wake up one day, I'm kind of tired of that guy. That, he's permanent. He's going to be there. The only place, I point out in the article, the only place that you're, you're going to get rid of your friends is by going to hell, because in hell, everything separates. There is no truth. And you're just giving up on, and so so it's, you know, it's just, everything's apart. So people are apart. In heaven, you're going to be united in truth. Yeah. More united than you ever could think it was possible. Mm. So you are directly, when you tell a friend, especially a good friend, especially a close friend, and that you're just tired of, or whatever it is, you don't like this or that, or you're just going to go do something else, you disagree with them, that is a direct statement, I'm, I want to go to hell. Because that's the only place yeah. that can occur. Yeah. Because we're made for our higher good is the common good. And yeah. it's through people that we get to God. That's why God became a man. Hmm. And, and he set up a church in which we learn about him through other people. And it's ordinary life experiences as well. Our fathers, our mothers, our friends, all of the different people in our lives, our teachers, the people we that we confront and we we in, encounter in reading the authors, yeah. all of those people are impacting our lives, and we should be 
grateful and thankful for those people. And, 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 re, and, you know, if it's, a, if it's like a little pain to have this person, well, that's, that's where you push through. That's where you offer up that sacrifice. And you say, well, what the heck I've got, this is my goal. I go over the bump. I don't yeah. say there's a bump of going the other direction because your goal yeah. is across the bump. So go through the bump. Yeah. <laughs> but you're permanent, you know, you're, you're permanent. And, you know, we've lost it across the board. There's so few people deliberate about their friendships, seeking these friendships. Um, and there's so few people that try to defend their friendships and hold on to them. And there's so many people encouraging you. Well, there's boundaries there and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't okay. do that. You know, and well, that person doesn't respect. And so it's like it doesn't no, Truth does not come into it. Yeah. What comes into it is I have this goal or this thing I don't want to do, whether it's religious or not religious. It doesn't come in. Is it true? Does my friend need the truth from me? Am I supposed to give that truth to my friend? Yeah. Am I just, is it just too inconvenient for me? Yeah. And this is where the rubber meets the road. It's not the African guy that you don't know or the Southeast Asian guy you don't know where the rubber meets the road. It's the people around you. It's the mm -hmm. people that you've encountered that God's put in front of you to make friends with and maybe you've even made friends with. That you're going to say to, something is stopping me, something's too hard, I'm going to leave it. That's the choice. The only thing that can mean is a choice for hell, because that's the only place where you can leave that person. Yeah. As God put in that person in your life, he's given you responsibility to help him through that truth to the best you can. Now, some people you might be only be able to take so far. Yeah. But the other side, that's fault to the other side. You can't necessarily do anything about that, but you can't condone it. You can't say it's a good thing and it's an, or even it's an okay thing. Mm -hmm. You gotta ask God to, to to heal that person and try to help that person move. Everybody's like that to the man, no matter what kind of deformities they have. We all have a calling to help every single man and respect him as a man, and mm -hmm. and be there present for him. I mean, that's what love your neighbor is about, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so refreshing hearing this stuff, just to because you know, like like so many of the things that the IP resources that are out there, like. It's like once you get to see this, understand it, it really just sheds so much light on the Gospels and all, all the religious tradition. You, you, yeah. Because you know, the people say these words, you know, they, <laughs> they quote the scriptures, but, you know, it's, you know, it, it, I'm certainly aware of a lot of people who, you know, who consider themselves faithful Catholic, but then don't have a problem. Yeah, I'm going to ghost. I'm, I don't know what they say, but I'm going to block yeah. him. I'm going to leave yeah. that guy, you know, whatever. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. It's not uncommon. There's no, there's no, you know, awareness of it. I mean, that's that's the, what we have to do is be aware of our, you know, what is that our responsibility because it's our happiness. It's at stake. And it's yeah. our fellow, happiness of our fellow man and the whole community that's yeah. at stake because the truth is what our, where our happiness is. Yeah. So it looks like we're about out of time. Is there anything else you wanted to cap it off with? Or, well, I mean, I, um, yeah. Well, I just want to encourage people to, you know, read the whole article if you haven't. And I thought the end of the article was really nice. That story you 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 quote of Damon and, and Pythias was really nice. You know, seeing that. Yeah, that's an amazing story. I encourage people to go read read the article and see the story of Damon and Pythias because it's really a story of. What friendship can should be about, and and we you know we have a lot of examples in especially American filmography and American um, sitcoms, uh, um, old ones, not new yeah. ones. Ones are are not not about that. They're about something else. Who knows? It's still under under deep investigation by scientists somewhere trying to figure out what the heck they're about. That's right. <laughs> I'm kidding, but it just feels like there should be because it's impossible to figure. But in the past, you know pre you know 1975 or something there's just this is a plethora of things that show you the meaning of friendship and we have to just realize how deficient we are and that you know looking at those shows and thinking about these things is necessary to aid our deficiencies to think we're okay already is mm. to not look at the sewer we're swimming in mm. and the mess we're swimming in and we're not okay and we have to feel like we are okay and that we haven't you know, even though we've done no work to figure it out and don't know anybody who's done any work to figure it out, we're fine. That's the issue. And that's how we end up inadvertently treating people in this mechanical, you know, way that we wouldn't want to. I mean, it's, it's very few people that want yeah. to be mean to their fellow man and don't want to and, and don't have an ideal that they that, that of Christ's ideal that we love our neighbors ourselves. And 
and that we, you know, we're we're not rash judging him, we're not treating him in any way that can break our contact with him. But we do it all the time because we just don't know how to think about these things, and we don't know our, you know, we don't. And finally, what we have to do is just, you know, buck up our will and say, I'm going to go find the friends I'm supposed to have, the people that are supposed to lead me, and and I'm going to go work on that, and um, and I'm going to respect my nature in, in those friendships as male or female, and and let those things be what they are and be the vehicles to truth that they are. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Um, well, I think I think that's probably a good place to stop. <laughs> yeah, because we went over some. I don't know how much, but we went over some. Well, thank yeah. you very much, Fletcher, for for talking to me. And Yeah, and thanks for being thanks. here. And thanks for, uh, yeah, doing this podcast. And yeah, I hope, I hope it helps a lot of people. I know it was very helpful for myself. Yeah, I hope so, too. All right. God bless you. See you, Fletch. Thank you. God bless. Bye. Bye. Stay tuned now to ask Dr. Rizzi your questions and hear those of others. Q&A will immediately follow this podcast. The Q&A link will appear in the description below this video. You may need to refresh your page to see the link. Get your copies of these resources today. You can get Dr. Rizzi's Kids Introduction to Physics and Beyond that gives the essential foundation that you need for all your thinking at the iapweb.org site shown. Also, you will need Dr. Rizzi's The Science Before Science, which goes beyond the kids' book and explains the basics of life. It is available as an audiobook. Also, get the audiobook of A Kid's Introduction to Physics on that same page. Articles that address issues like you just heard in the podcast are available at the Physics and Culture magazine at iapweb.org magazine. All this information is available in the description below this video. You can also find links to the unofficial IP Facebook and Twitter pages below. Thank you.